just give it a couple of minutes for people to talk. Hello, Ali and Taras, all good with you? Hello, all's well. Hello. Hi, Taras. I think we shall start now. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar organized by Etcetera, titled IoT Data Management, Current Market Challenges and Solutions. I am Nabil Khan, and I will be your host. If you face any difficulties or have any comments, please feel free to send them through the chat window, which is being moderated. And for your questions, you may send them in the Q&A window anytime through the presentation, and we will address them in the Q&A session at the end of this webinar. A recorded version of this webinar will be available. We will send you the link through the email. Now, let me introduce you to the presenters today. Mr. Ali Husseini, representing Senra in this webinar, is an experienced chief executive officer with a demonstrated history of working in the information technology, wireless, mobile, and software development industries. An expert in product development, management, and sales, he is an active member of the LoRa Alliance and IoT enthusiast. Strong entrepreneurship prof professional with a Bachelor of Science focused in computer science from the University of North Carolina. Mr. Taras Taburanski from TechTelic is a business development and sales representative with, the three, with three years of experience in IoT sphere. Currently, he is responsible for supporting clients in GCC and Asian regions. Myself, Nabil Khan, with 20 plus years of experience in information technology fields with special attention to Microsoft stack of software development technologies. Over the past few years, my passion and a special interest has been in the IoT domain and related technologies. I have been with Exeter for a little over than four years in the capacity of Chief Technology Officer. My colleague, Mr. Bashar Khan, who is an electrical engineer, graduated from Cyprus with over four years of experience at the energy field, currently working at Exeter. His main expertise is providing consultancy and energy efficient solutions based on energy audits, currently working with LoRaWAN IoT technologies to digitize and reduce the cost of facilities in Kuwait. Let's go through the agenda today. Introduction about this webinar, which has been conducted already. The next will be Accenture presenting overview of its solutions, introduction to LoRaWAN by myself, challenges over a wide variety of vertical markets and industries by Mr. Bashar Khan, Mr. Ali Husseini, after that, will from Sendra shall cover device management capabilities and data management trends and users view, followed by Mr. Taras from TechTelic, will, who will walk us through the TechTelic LoRaWAN solutions, covering their carrier grade gateways and advantages of LoRaWAN technology, which will be followed by a question and answer session at the end. Let me tell you about Excedra in brief and our offerings. Excedra is a Kuwaiti professional IoT solution provider company. We leverage the top trending technologies to simplify the process of data collection, storage, and retrieval in order to accomplish the goal of connecting things to the cloud, 
We offer the market competitive and advanced solutions in the IoT domain with unique capabilities in wireless RF technology and the LoRaWAN protocol. LoRaWAN, which is high performance, low power, and affordable connectivity, offers the industry a diverse set of applications that expands from utilities, trucking, logistics, smart city and parking, agriculture and farming, intelligent building, remote monitoring, monitoring of equipment, trash, and it's not limited to machines only. It is used to track animals like cows, water pipes, and the list goes on. Excedra solution offerings. Uh, we offer the market IoT remote, remote monitoring solutions focusing on LoRaWAN technologies. However, we do provide closed and single vendor proprietary IoT solutions based on battery powered wireless sensors and gateways ready to be deployed on the go. A few business cases are mentioned here, but as they say, sky is the limit for IoT implementations. We will be deep diving into IoT in this webinar where we will come across a few use cases that will be discussed along the way that will explain in detail the working model of IoT in those cases. Complementing our IoT solutions, we provide computerized maintenance management solutions that help customers address the issues effectively by centralizing the maintenance information and facilitating the maintenance operations. The goal is to optimize the utilization and availability of physical equipment like vehicles, machinery, communications, plant infrastructures, and other assets. Accenture also partners with Vocalcom, headquartered in France, for AI-powered cloud con contact center solution that powers innovative personality-based routing and manages multi-channel customer interactions as a single conversation. Being an IT solution provider, Accenture provides expert and innovative solutions leveraging Microsoft cloud technologies using SharePoint portal platform, including, including responsive web and mobile development from scratch. Though the irrigation control and energy optimization are part of the IoT initiative, so I shall leave them to be discussed later in this webinar. That was about Excedra in brief, and now we start with IoT, introducing LoRaWAN. Okay, what, what is the problem? The problem is there are too many devices, and as Gartner report suggested that there will be more than 25 billion devices by 2020 and 45 billion devices by 2025. The available technologies like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are not well suited as their range is less than 100 meter, throughput is quite high, and consume enormous power. The 3G, 4G cellular is also not well suited as the hardware is expensive, expensive data plans, high battery inefficiency, available spectrum designed for 100 megabits per second for data and voice. The endpoint costs need to be low. The size must be small for integration into everything. The power should be conservative to run on a battery, like in milliamps. Low bandwidth support for bytes and date, bytes of data and not megabytes. Now the answer to the problem is LoRaWAN. LoRaWAN specification is a low power, wide area networking protocol designed to wirelessly connect battery operated things to the internet in regional, national, or global networks. Targeting key Internet of Things requirements such as bidirectional communication, end to end security, mobility, and localization services. Why LoRaWAN? LoRaWAN standard. LoRaWAN standard is based on an open protocol approach managed by LoRa Alliance which supervises the development of standard and ensures interoperability between all LoRaWAN networks. Flexibility in network deployment models. It can be deployed as an own private LoRaWAN networks or can leverage existing public LoRaWAN networks. Battery life optimization, optimized for a battery life of 15 plus years when communicating once per day from security standpoint. LoRaWAN specification uses 128-bit advanced encryption standard algorithms to provide end-to-end -end encryption for both public and private networks. And most importantly, supported by both the community and tier one companies. The key features, long range, it has deep indoor coverage, including multi-floor buildings, basements, and undergrounds follows the star topology network design. It has long battery life, 
low power optimized up to 10 year lifetime, up to 10 times versus cellular, high capacity, millions of messages per base station per gateway, multi-tenant interoperability, public or private network deployments, very low cost, minimal infrastructure. Because LoRaWAN is open standard and combined with cost-free operation frequencies, low cost base stations allow operators to roll out networks in just few months with minimum investment. Geolocation, LoRaWAN uses network triangulation to passively locate any LoRa device not requiring the need for GPS, Firmware updates over the air for applications and the LoRaWAN stack. Roaming, seamless handovers from one network to another. And like we already talked about the security embedded end-to-end 128-bit -end encryption with unique ID for applications and networks. How does LoRaWAN stand against other available technologies in the market? As you can see, like we talked about the key features, high battery type lifetime with range more than 10 kilometers. It stands out from all the other available technologies in the market. As we said, it is backed by LoRa Alliance. What is LoRa Alliance? LoRa Alliance is an open nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting the interoperability and standardization of low power wide area network technologies to drive implementation of internet of things. It is backed by strong 500 plus members and it is the fastest growing technology lines globally. The top IoT application areas, the 2020 analysis of the top IoT application areas shows manufacturing industry leading the list of enterprise IoT projects at 22%, followed by transportation and mobility at 15, energy solutions at 14% and the rest continues. As worldwide energy consumption is expected to grow by 40% over the next 25 years, the need for smarter energy solutions has reached an all time high. IoT is revolutionizing nearly every part of the energy industry from generation to transmission to distribution and changing how energy companies and customers interact. Both solution providers and energy companies themselves understand the need for and value of connected IoT solutions. Bashar shall be covering the energy efficiency as one of the use cases. With above, I would like to end my presentation here and thank you once more for attending. Now my colleague, Mr. Bashar Khan, shall continue his presentation titled Challenges over a wide, wide variety of vertical markets and industries. Bashar, over to you. Thank you, everyone. Hi, good evening, everyone. Bashar here. As Nabil spoke, as Nabil spoke regarding the IoT solutions and how the LoRaWAN technology is being utilized in the IoT sector, we now take a deeper look into the challenges over a wide variety of vertical markets and industries in the local market. The first point that I'll be speaking about is the security, privacy, and reliability of the IoT solutions and specifically LoRaWAN technology. Moving forward towards the energy consumption and how difficult it is in understanding the energy consumption of a building. The third point will be regarding the, the data fragmentation and how fragmented the data is and difficult to make sense of, of the data. The fourth point will be the market challenges here in Kuwait, followed by solutions that can be provided for them. Privacy and security is something we always look forward into when we talk about technology and especially new technologies. Then comes the reliability to know if the technology is reliable or not. I would like to read a quote by the LoRa Alliance Technical Committee. Securing an Internet of Things deployment and keeping it safe and secure is not only a matter of choosing the right protocol, but it also relies on the implementation process as well as embracing best practices and industry standards. LoRaWAN is by design very secure. Authentication and encryption are in fact mandatory, but networks and devices can be compromised if security keys are not kept safe and aren't randomized across devices. That's why 
it's critical to look for lower RAN certified devices to ensure the device has been tested against the standard and works as expected. The LoRa Alliance has always kept security front and center in its development of its specification and has been highly transparent about the protocol's security features. These specifications has been designed from the security as an essential aspect, providing state-of-the-art security properties that meets the needs of highly scalable, low-power IoT networks. The big challenge of knowing the energy consumption, where the electricity and water are being consumed from within the facility. Are they being overused? Can we reduce the consumption? These are some relevant questions to be answered while understanding the energy consumption. The breakdown for different periods of time is a relevant factor in measuring of energy consumption. For instance, different seasons, days of the weeks, hour of the days, etc. To understand this, we firstly need the electrical and water meters to be placed to understand each part of the facility as there are limited or no water meters in a building apart from the main water meter within a building. And even if there are water meters within a building, generally they are incapable of transmitting any sort of data. Sometimes the water meters are outdated and are not transmitting appropriate readings. Also, the electrical meters within a building generally are incapable of transmitting any sort of data. The analysis of energy consumption also requires to understand the demand and to evaluate the impact of demand peaks. Normally, we would evaluate yearly data. However, there are definite external influences to energy consumption that sometimes create a peak in, an, in consumption. Moving on towards the data fragmentation. The data is an enterprise's most valuable digital resource. It should be a competitive asset, but instead data has been a costly and risky business if not interpreted and used properly. Mass data fragmentation leads to increase the amount of data across different locations, which could be in the cloud softwares or management systems. That prevents organizations from fully utilizing its value. There have been numerous research made, made concerning mass data fragmentation and its impact. Let us take an example of our water meters. When we get the data from the water meters in our IoT application, we might not be able to analyze the various readings coming through and how to make sense of such fragmented data. Without making sense of such fragmented data, we don't completely utilize the potential of the IoT sensors and its relevant softwares. One such very important is the predictive maintenance. The goal is to go beyond knowing what has happened to providing a best assessment of what will happen in the future. If data is fragmented, this becomes extremely difficult. Detailed analysis is required to make such adequate use of such data. The fourth and the most important point is regarding the market challenges. The market challenges varies by different sectors. I'll be pointing out three specific sectors here. Firstly, buildings. Understanding the facility is key in a building. Without any temperature sensors, water leak sensors, smart electrical meters, smart water meters, it becomes extremely difficult to understand the facility. Only once we get complaints of heating or cooling or water leak issues, then we take some action. These sensors are of paramount importance in a smart building. And in order to avoid any complaints, we must take immediate action. The moment something starts to go wrong through the help of these smart IoT sensors. Second, healthcare. What are the challenges of the healthcare industry? Lack of health data, blood pressure, breathing, and in the COVID times, there's a distance measurement, energy monitoring, air quality, hygiene, etc. We will get all of this data by installing the relevant machines, but to be aware of the above parameters remotely is the key. It also helps them to make the hospital smart and, to, and get access with, for the data 24 by 7 onto your phone. Thirdly, is a very important food and beverage industry. The key issue facing the food and beverage industry is the temperature monitoring for the refrigeration remotely. Without these sensors, we don't have access to any temperature data from the cool chillers, refrigerations within the restaurants and central kitchens, etc. And there is a high chance for compressors to stop working or the door of the refrigeration being left open late at night which leads to food spoilage. Uh, food spoilage. 
One such very important example is the storage of cheese in the food and beverage warehouse, which needs to be stored and maintained at a very precise temperature or the cheese might be spoiled. Having temperature sensors in place gives you the ease of mind. Moving on, I'll be speaking about the solutions and how IoT can provide solutions to these challenges. The solutions can, can be provided through the use of wireless IoT sensors. Temperature, humidity, voltage, current meters, infrared motion detection, car parking sensors, etc. There are more than 50, there are more than several types of sensors that are for different, different use cases. A lot can be done through the IoT remote monitoring, which, which doesn't help in monitoring only, but solves real life challenges. The controlling and energy savings, switching off the lights on the hallways by using motion sensors, or switch off or switch on this uh, AC automatically, or via schedule based, based on specific times of the day. Stop the wastage of water through IR technologies, which includes motion based faucets for the toilets. Basically, a complete energy audit is required to find the leak points in a building and then propose the solutions accordingly. That's all from the market challenges and solutions. Now I'll be handling over, handing over to Mr. Ali Hosseini. He is the CEO of Sandra, wherein he'll be discussing regarding the exp his experience in the software field of the IoT. Thank you. Thank you, Bashar. Uh, thank you, Nabil, for uh, the warm welcome and also for hosting the event. Um, I'm pretty excited to be able to uh, discuss about IoT data management. Um, and hopefully after the end of this session, uh, you all will have learned a few things uh, regarding uh, our analytics platform, uh, as well as um, the overall process of IoT data management. So what I'll do is I'll uh, initially kind of just give an introduction on myself. I, I think you've already heard a little bit if you were uh, logged in earlier at the start of the webinar. But um, I'm Ali Hosseini, CEO of Senra. We uh, are a public IoT network operator in India. We've been deploying networks uh, since 2017 and have coverage in around 74 cities or so across the country. Um, with our focus being on the network side, we quickly realized that um, the connections that will be uh, coming onto our network uh, will be passing a lot of data through and needing um, support on analyzing and understanding where that data goes, um, how do you decode the data uh, and make sense of it. So uh, we expanded our uh, portfolio offerings to also include an analytics platform, which I'll talk to a little bit about today. Um, because of the challenges customers were facing on how to actually make sense of all of the data that's being transmitted uh, from the field to the cloud. So to give you a quick uh, market uh, background on IoT data management, um, what you see is currently by 2026, um, the global IoT data management market is expected to reach $147.8 billion. What that means is that uh, people around the world are investing a lot of uh, resources, time and money into solving the big challenge of IoT data and um, where it's coming from, uh, how it's going to be managed uh, and how it's gonna be processed and analyzed. So it's a big market opportunity for those that are interested in solving that problem. And it's also driving um, a lot of advantages for companies that decide to focus energy into that uh, IoT management uh, market. The IoT management market uh, is expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of about 16.5% uh, uh, over those uh, years, uh, which is a, a rapid, rapid growth uh, in comparison to uh, other uh, industries. And you see this depiction of a regional based uh, growth rate. Um, so you'll notice that the Asia market um, is heavily leading the way with the focus on IoT data management, followed by North America and Europe. And then uh, lastly, uh, by South America, Africa, and the Middle East market. Um, and this is an expected uh, growth rate uh, based on region up until 2025. Um, however, the ME market, the Middle East market is actually pushing pretty aggressively. And I think we'll get caught up with uh, Europe and, and North America quite soon. 
So what is IoT data management? Uh, you might be wondering what that means. Well, I, I like to think of it as uh, two different uh, sections or categories. One is the processing part of data. Uh, and then the second is the analysis of the data. So as we've heard, um, IoT and LoRaWAN, uh, the data comes from the sensors and devices that are uh, deployed into the field. Um, that information uh, on the device itself typically has a uh, module or a chip that transmits wirelessly information through a certain protocol, which on the discussion we're having today is LoRaWAN. That data, when it's transmitted, is actually encrypted um, at 128 AES encryption. And as it is being transmitted, uh, there needs to be a receiving uh, end that takes the data from the device and routes it into the internet, which in the LoRaWAN space, we call them gateways. So they go on top of rooftops, on towers, um, and they have a backhaul uh, connection to the internet. So once that data gets transmitted to the infrastructure, uh, it then gets routed into a network server, an OSS, or in what we call in LoRaWAN, a LoRaWAN network server. Uh, and at this point, all the data is still um, encrypted. So the LoRaWAN network server will decide where to send the data, and the data will then go to an application server somewhere in the cloud or on a local uh, instance. Uh, once it's received on the application server, then there's data decoding that takes place. Um, a proper IoT data management process is not as just decoding the data, but understanding how to handle the data, how to organize the data, how to potentially enrich your data to make your data processing faster. Uh, and then obviously all of this gets stored in a reliable, secure uh, database that is uh, easily accessible uh, on the analysis portion. So once you've got the processing portion done, uh, you then start to do your analytics, um, your data visualizations, your uh, decision-making, predictive analysis, and predictive maintenance tasks. So data retrieval simply means that it, it's queries that are being sent to the database that can retrieve the information in a very rapid manner. Uh, it can be exported out into reports if needed. Um, data visualization, uh, you'll see those in widgets, KPIs, uh, metrics, charts, line graphs, um, and even uh, geographically on a map. Uh, and then one of the more important parts that I think is really what's taking IoT to the next level is the rules engines and the predictive analysis that could take place. So taking information from one sensor and then having the platform or the, the computer decide how to handle uh, the situation. Should it send another message to another device and have that device do an action? Um, should it send an email or an SMS to the appropriate owner of that uh, device or equipment to understand that there's an issue? So all of those rules and decision-making gets taking place during the analysis piece. So how do you think IoT data management is growing so fast where there's benefits to it? Um, I've listed the top seven that I think are pretty critical and why IoT data management is key to becoming successful uh, with your projects, IoT projects. Uh, one is the fact that you can reduce your project time and money. Uh, being able to process data quicker means you can be more informed quicker. Um, and with a proper IoT platform, you can actually process data at a much faster rate uh, and prepare uh, projects, solutions uh, for deployment at a quicker time span. Uh, the second uh, point is that you're obviously able to do faster business decision making, um, being able to get the data directly to your phone from anywhere in the world um, allows you to make quick decisions that may give you a competitive advantage, which leads me into the third point. Um, competitive advantages, uh, you'll see that IoT data management or companies that are investing money into IoT data management are getting a competitive advantage over their competitors. Um, they're able to create new business models uh, because of the amount of data that they're able to process and uh, get access to in near real time. Uh, 
Um, for predictive maintenance, this is a, a key one. Um, I'll give an example of predictive maintenance. We've done a smart agriculture project uh, where there is soil sensors from Tectelic um, installed uh, into the, the soil and it detects um, moisture levels. Um, what we've done with this moisture level is we've been able to take that data when it gets received in the analytics platform, uh, we've been able to make decisions on when to turn on or off an irrigation system, which becomes a fully automated self uh, watering uh, garden, uh, reducing uh, the need for human intervention up until the point of harvesting. Uh, and so what that means is the, the soil sensor will send certain levels uh, in your analytics platform. You set rules based on when you want the valves of the irrigation system to turn on or off. We have another LoRaWAN device that is plugged up to the valve on the irrigation system. And the platform sends a downlink, uh, which is a payload um, to the device to make it switch the valve on or off based on uh, the appropriate moisture levels. So that's an example of predictive maintenance. Uh, also, you can do things with data where you can stick a vibration sensor, for example, on a very large factory floor equipment that costs thousands and thousands of dollars and detect uh, if the vibration is getting to a point where it could potentially damage the equipment and then send a message to the platform where in turn would send a message to a power on off switch device which would save you tons and tons of money uh, and prevent the equipment from overheating or getting damaged. So I think that is one of the most key parts of the benefits of IoT data management. Aside from that, you've got improved processes and systems, you've got increased visibility on your day-to-day -day operations. And another important factor is the fact that you're, you're improving your customer experience. So with the IoT data management processes that I've defined, you do need um, a system to be able to handle the data and manage it and do all those tasks that we discussed. And that would be a IoT platform. So when we started uh, deploying our infrastructure, we quickly realized that some of our customers uh, needed uh, the ability to process the data. And we invested a lot of time and energy in trying to find a a way to develop a platform that can reduce um, deployment time, that can be very lightweight on coding aspects. So you don't have to spend a lot of time uh, decoding payloads and writing specific codes for solutions and, and metrics is that you're trying to take from the data. So what we've done is we created an IoT platform. So basically the sensor sends the data from the field to that network I was explaining. The network sends it through the network server, um, the data, and then the data gets received at the application server. And once it's received there, you've got these different tiers of things that need to be thought of as you're processing and analyzing. One is obviously you need to have a robust, secure database um, that will store all the information uh, and make it accessible. You then need to consider how are you going to integrate your platform with these networks, with these wireless communication systems, um, how many protocols are you going to be able to support uh, if a data is connected to MBIOT, a device uh, is connected to the MBIOT and another one's connected to LoRaWAN, will the platform be able to support the simultaneous parallel data streaming into that platform? Um, so we've designed a system that allows us to integrate with multiple LoRaWAN networks, uh, as well as support data from non-LoRaWAN uh, protocols, uh, which creates a central repository for data processing, data analytics at the uh, application and the project side. So network management, um, normalizing the connectivity, creating the ability to harmonize all the data in one central location. Uh, we have tools that allow us to do the device management, get the health of the device, understand what kind of outputs the device is giving, um, if it's online or offline, uh, being able to decode payloads and write logic uh, to, make, to make sense of the data that's being transmitted. Uh, and then what most customers like is the analytics and the data visualization. So the algorithms that we implement to be able to show you information and metrics and KPIs and charts on the map and so forth. Uh, we've also implemented an API, which most IoT platforms should have, uh, which allows 
companies to create their own custom applications uh, and be able to access the data via APIs um, without having to actually log into the platform. So uh, speaking of Ginger, which is our analytics platform, I wanted to kind of just go through a few key things that our platform features do, which address a lot of what I've already discussed. Uh, one thing you'll see is real-time data analytics. Um, anyone can create a free account. Uh, you just go to ginger.io and you'll be able to start creating an account and play around immediately. Um, what you'll be able to see is uh, we have a lot of powerful graphical KPI widgets. Uh, you'll have mapping visualizations for indoor and outdoor use cases. You'll be able to upload your own custom maps and floor plans. Um, and we've got the ability to, to monitor the health and status of devices through our device management uh, administrative features. Uh, obviously, we have the ability to create reports and set up alerts and notifications, text messages, downlinks to uh, devices based on um, values that come from other uh, outputs. Our analytics dashboards and widgets, uh, we support KPIs, graphs, tables, counters, charts. It's a large variety of real-time and historical features and functions that you'll be able to take advantage of. Um, the geographical visualizations that we have implemented uh, support static and mobile devices so that you can actually see them moving on the map. Um, and we just recently introduced indoor floor plans as well as geofencing, which I'll talk to real quickly here. Um, our floor plan custom maps actually came from a client of ours that was implementing panic emergency response system for their staff in the hotels. Um, they needed to hand panic buttons that were LoRaWAN um, to, their to their employees. Uh, and their employees uh, would press the panic button in case they were hurt or in danger. Uh, and what our customer wanted to do was leverage our platform to be able to see where the incident has occurred uh, in real time on their floor plan map. So we spent a lot of months developing the capability to upload this hotel floor plan map. Um, for indoor location-based uh, solution, there was uh, involvement of an other technology called BLE. Um, so we used BLE beacons and were able to map them on the floor plan uh, and be able to determine based on the association of the LoRaWAN device to the BLE beacon, which room the incident would occur in. Um, and we also set up um, a siren, which was LoRaWAN enabled in their management office. So the concept was, is if someone was not logged into Ginger or did not have their phone in their hand, they still wanted to know if there was an incident happening in the hotel. So if the panic button got triggered, um, our system was able to send a downlink to a LoRaWAN siren um, to turn on um, the sound and trigger um, a, a loud noise in the manager's room uh, so that someone would be able to quickly address the issue, log into the platform and get uh, an immediate update on where the incident happened. It was a big success. And since we've rolled this out, we've had a lot of other customers taking advantage of this for indoor tracking purposes. We had another customer that wanted to uh, do geofencing um, to set virtual boundaries that allowed them to know when a device uh, has gone in uh, and or out of the geofence boundaries. Um, this was used for tracking um, in a construction site on skyscrapers. They wanted to know where uh, the workers were going and if they were entering in danger zone areas. And by implementing this geofence, they were able to address their needs and get real-time alerts uh, to prevent any kind of incident from happening. Um, our ad robust administrative tools, you know, we look at Ginger as being a low code development platform. Uh, and what that means is you just have to do a minimal coding in Java to decode the payloads that are coming from the device. You set it up one time and then everything else is, uh, does not require any more coding. It's configurations, um, just picking colors and icons and things that you can do um, to visualize it on a map. Uh, we have the ability to upload uh, any kind of device that you want uh, and, and uh, do the processing for. And we also have a set of devices that we've already done a lot of the decoding payload uh, work 
in advance. So if you were to buy one of those devices that were already um, pre-configured with our platform, uh, it'll just start streaming data and you don't have any coding to do at all. Um, on top of that, we've talked about the network integration capabilities, which you can do from our admin tools, and you can integrate the third-party mobile applications. Uh, we recently rolled out a Ginger mobile application on Google Play and App Store. So if you do create an account uh, with our platform, you can go to either of those uh, locations and actually download the application and get the data in real time uh, on your phone. Uh, and the uh, URL to the, the actual uh, platform is located here on the bottom left as well. So with all of this and with data management and platforms, the end goal is to do what? Is to provide end-to-end -end solutions to your customers to be able to create new solutions on the fly uh, with minimal time and development involved. And what the platform does uh, is exactly that. It allows our customers to deploy solutions very fast um, with minimal coding, uh, and it's uh, up to the subject matter expert to define what those solutions should be like. So these are just a few listed um, solutions that we've deployed over the years. Uh, it's not limited to this, um, but I'll kind of discuss a few solutions that we specifically created that comes with a mobile app um, based on our uh, experience and uh, interactions with our customers. Uh, one of the things that Bashar talked about uh, was cold storage, um, temperature monitoring. We created an app called Ufreeze. It integrates with our platform. Uh, it integrates with several different temperature sensors like the Tectelic Tundra, which you'll hear about in a little while from Taras. Um, all that data is transmitted through the platform and can be monitored through our app. It's available on Google Play. And all these apps that I'm showing you are available on Google Play. Uh, we did a waste management project where we had bin sensors on trash cans um, that uh, the pickup crew would want to be able to improve their uh, routes uh, where they didn't want to pick up trash, uh, go to a location where the trash can was empty and not needing to be discarded. So with the bin sensors and our mobile app, uh, we were able to do route optimizations where the drivers were able to refine their pickup routes uh, based on going to the bins that only need to be empty and uh, ignoring the locations that were not quite full yet, which ended up saving them money uh, and uh, obviously fuel. Um, we have one of my favorite apps is the tracker app called Ufind. Um, this has a lot of cool features like live tracking. Um, you can do historical tracking and pull up uh, paths of where the tracker had gone through uh, or to. Uh, and we do have the ability to set waypoints. So as you're live or moving, you can uh, mark a key important part uh, on the tracking app. And this works with asset tracking, vehicle tracking, animal tracking, uh, anything that has a LoRaWAN tracker uh, would be able to be processed on this application. Uh, we have a streetlight uh, app that is used for streetlight maintenance. Uh, we've had uh, a client that wanted to be able to troubleshoot streetlight poles because they're so high off the ground. Um, how do you get access easily to the controller that's installed at the top of the pole? So this app was allowing them to get some quick information on if the device is working or not, is there power coming to the device? And they even have the ability to try to troubleshoot the on and off of the light uh, directly from the mobile application. And finally, um, we have UPARC, uh, which we rolled out with a police department uh, in the city of Amritsar uh, initially in 2000 and uh, I would say 18. Uh, and what we were doing is we gave the police this app um, and they would get notifications when um, people were illegally parking throughout the city at high traffic intersections. We would deploy the parking sensors at those locations and then the police would get um, an automatic uh, notification to the mobile app and they would be able to uh, navigate themselves directly to the location of where the car was illegally parked. From there, they would issue parking tickets and that actually ended up 
uh, the cost uh, of the solution that was deployed ended up being um, returned of their investment within the first three months of the deployment of the solution. And after that, all the tickets that they were um, issuing uh, ended up becoming pure profit for them. So it was a big success. Um, so any of these apps are available. You can download them uh, on Google Play. And these are just a few examples of solutions that you can do with the platform. Um, obviously, if you have a team that knows how to do mobile app development, we have APIs available that you can access to develop your own custom apps. So with that, I'll uh, end my part of the presentation. Again, thank you, Nabil and Bashar for having me and I'll pass this over to uh, Taras from TechTeller. Thank you, Ali, and thank you very much Hassan and Nabil for organizing this IoT webinar. My name is uh, Taras Saboransky. Uh, I'm very thankful for this opportunity and I hope that you will find this uh, webinar very interesting and informative. As a provider of carrier grade LoRaWAN solutions, Tiktaalik has adopted the mantra, IoT just works. Because we understand the importance of IoT solutions that can be quickly deployed and easily scaled. We firmly believe that the only way to increase the adoption of IoT globally is if the solutions being deployed just work. So today I will be presenting on Tectalic's commitment to provide IoT solutions that just work with a focus on smart city use cases. As you know, any LoRaWAN network starts with gateways, which are essential for providing the reliable coverage. And Tectalic has become well known in the IoT and specifically LoRaWAN ecosystem as a premier provider of carrier grade gateways. Over the past four years, Tectalic has developed the most comprehensive portfolio of LoRaWAN gateways for any customer deployment indoor and outdoor. If you're looking for a wide area coverage of a city or municipality, this can be served by our Kona Mega or Micro Gateways. Maybe you're looking for a carrier grade outdoor coverage on a smaller scale, for example, of a farm or university campus. Then the newly released Kona Enterprise will become a great gateway of choice for you. If you need a lot of coverage on the go and you need to bring this network with you, for example, to mount it on a truck or train, plane or a ship, uh, then we can help you to achieve this with Kona Mobile Gateway. If you happen to have access to low-cost cable strand infrastructure, you have a Kona Strand Gateway to accommodate this solution as well. Or maybe you're looking for LoRaWAN connectivity in your home, office, or some other indoor environment. Then Kona Micro has emerged as the LoRaWAN Gateway of choice for these deployments. But no matter the deployment, Tectalic has developed a gateway solution to meet your needs. And when we, when we develop these products, we always do so with the goal of ensuring that the product is designed for high availability, scalability, and uh, most importantly, to reduce the operator total cost of ownership. As you know, the most expensive part of operating an IoT network is in the upfront capital costs. It's the cost of deployment and continuous management and operation. Tectalic addresses this by committing to minimal maintenance to reduce operating expenses, high scalability to promote accelerated network rollout, competitive pricing to minimize the cost of the initial deployment. As we focus today on Norwegian solutions for the smart cities space, I'm going to speak a little bit further about three of our gateway solutions that are designed for this market specifically. The first gateway I would like to des describe in more detail is Kona Macro. It is a carrier grade outdoor solution that suits operators and enterprises that require a very scalable and low cost low run gateway that minimizes network total cost of ownership while improving coverage and capacity of the network. Inbuilt active cavity filter helps this gateway to mitigate incoming noise from cellular and other neighboring networks. As a result, this gateway shows superior receiver and transmitter RF performance, even in the most challenging situations. For example, 
Many of the Vitalik customers have collocated Konomaker on the tower together with 3G or 4G base stations with no visible impact to macro gateway performance. The same great level of performance and coverage can be achieved by Kona Macro in the smart city rooftop, de rooftop deployment scenario. In order to facilitate rapid deployment, this gateway is designed to be compact and lightweight. With both cellular modem and GPS antenna embedded in the Kona Macro, it is targeted at network sites that dictate a small form factor and low power consumption. This game also has IP67 rating and it's designed for the most demanding outdoor installations with operating range of minus 40 to plus 60 degrees Celsius. Conomacro can be installed in various locations, reducing site and deployment costs while addressing different vertical IoT applications. Second gateway I would like to showcase is the newly released Kona Enterprise. This is the most highly optimized, smallest, and fully integrated outdoor gateway on the market today. It is ideal for an outdoor and indoor environment. It comes equipped with all the carrier grade protection expected by an outdoor gateway, including lightning protection, IP67 rating, etc but at much lower cost than comparable products. This gateway features fully integrated Ethernet and cellular backhauls via a CAT6 modem for 3G and 4G connectivity. It also includes inbuilt GPS and lower antennas and give operators the ability to attach external antennas uh, to expand the coverage. With the Kona Enterprise Gateway, it is so simple to deploy. Literally, all you need is to power it up and it just works. This gateway is designed for zero maintenance and low operations costs. So it empowers users to enter the IT ecosystem quickly, easily, without any hassle. Our goal at Tectalic is to ensure that we are eliminating barriers for IT adoption, making it easier than ever for anybody to deploy an IT network, regardless of their background or technical expertise. And the Conan Enterprise will help our customers to achieve this. Up next, I would like to speak a little bit about our Kona Micro Gateway, the most widely deployed indoor LoRaWAN gateway on the market today. Kona Micro is a highly scalable, cost-effective plug-and-play gateway with ideal, which is ideal for any indoor spark home or office connectivity requirements. It supports eight channels, and in addition to Ethernet backhaul, it comes equipped with a CAT6 3G 4G modem for the most reliable cellular backhaul connectivity available. Conomicro is one of the only gateways on the market that also includes a battery backup. So in the event when your gateway loses power, for example, due to a power outage or accidental disconnection, your network will continue to operate and you will continue to collect your data from the devices without disruption. Kona Micro Gateway enables many of our customers to deploy reliable smart building, cold chain, and facility management solutions. In addition to the diverse gateway portfolio, Vitalik has developed a very comprehensive portfolio of end devices for many different use cases and applications, ranging from smart cities and buildings to asset tracking, smart agriculture, industrial automation, and even smart health and wellness. For today's presentation, I will walk you through some of the solutions we are deploying with our customers and our partners for smart city projects, and more specifically for data center and food industry use cases. So first I would like to introduce you to one of the Telex flagship IT devices in the smart building space. This is our smart room sensor one of the most widely deployed devices in the LoRaWAN ecosystem. As you can see, Smart Room Sensor has a very small form factor and it is designed for a better life of 10 years, meaning you can set it and forget it without needing to worry about recharging or consistently swapping out batteries. This device is capable of measuring all of the following metrics, temperature and humidity, movement and motion detection, G-force measurement, 
light detection, moisture or water leaks. And it also has ability to integrate with a magnetic reed switch and external connector probes. And many of smart home sensor functions can actually be applied to data center use case. Data center facilities operate 24 seven, consuming vast amounts of energy and generating huge quantities of heat. Temperature control within the data center is essential in order to avoid equipment overheating, to regulate equipment cooling and to measure overall efficiency. This is also a critical function to reduce energy costs, which represent the largest operational expense in uh, data sensor centers. With Tectalix smart room sensors, customers can ensure reliable temperature and humidity measurements to effectively operate the data center facilities. Water leaks are also one of the biggest threats to the data center. Leak detection sensors notify teams at the very first sign of leak, allowing them to take immediate action. For example, smart room sensor has an option to attach rope sensor that it can be placed in the hard to reach locations or potential leak sources such as pipes. Data center, a data center physical security breach might result in the loss of equipment. But the real danger has to do with the data exposure. When it comes to monitoring and restricting access to the data center itself, smart room sensors can be utilized for motion and presence detection with passive infrared lens. This ensures that no unexpected intruders can access the facility without being detected. Next, I would like to talk about outdoor and indoor tracking solutions developed by Tiktaalik and widely used by our clients. In the recent years, tracking of the moving assets has become one of the major concerns in various industries, including food industry. Most commonly, we see customers looking to deploy outdoor low-run asset tracking networks to locate and monitor available outdoor equipment, especially when they move through remote locations. When engaging with our customers, we learned that theft and uh, lost assets is one of the most costly and impactful ch challenge they face. And the Pelic Industrial GPS Asset Tracker can mitigate the risks and losses as associated with this. This device combines precise GPS-enabled satellite location tracking with Bluetooth tracking for seamless indoor and outdoor positioning of the assets. The rugged IP67 design allows for operation in diverse deployment environments with an operable temperature range of minus 40 to plus 85 degrees Celsius. GPS tracker contains two D cell batteries for optimal battery life of up to eight to 10 years. This unit is also equipped with an accelerometer to accommodate even based startup, minimizing unnecessary battery usage. And next on, I would like to share a few insights about indoor tracking. An indoor asset tracking network not only allows you to locate your assets, but also provides the ability to analyze movement patterns, allowing you to make smart decisions. This is particularly valuable in retail environments where, uh, where you could track the shopping carts, for example, to see shopper movement patterns or behaviors of the customers and group the items throughout the store accordingly. The Tectalic Enterprise Asset Tracker is a great solution for locating, tracking, and managing assets in different indoor or app environments, such as retail stores, warehouses, and other facilities. This device combines the long-range low-power benefits of LoRaWAN with the universal availability and reliability of Bluetooth low energy. With AA battery, it can reach up to 10 years of better life. And this device is also equipped with accelerometer to further preserve the battery life. Last but not least is one of our newer solutions launched by the Pelic in 2021. This is a comprehensive cold room monitoring solution utilizing our new Tundra cold room sensor. The solution is ideal for the restaurant or supermarket food storage environments as well as for medical, pharmaceutical, and vaccine storages, which are at the top of everyone's mind right now. 
Tondo sensor helps our customers to save the money and reduce the waste of, uh, by eliminating food and medical spoilage. Having real time, always on insight into the temperature and conditions of the products helps to take immediate action in the event of freeze or malfunction. Tondo sensor is capable of, of measuring temperatures down to minus 40 degrees of Celsius to support monitoring of most valuable cold storage assets. And again, in response to our customers' challenges, we also have multiple variants of this device for diverse deployment environments. So this sensor can be placed inside the cold chamber or outside with, a, with an external probe that will be wired inside the chamber. As you can see, amazing things can happen when leaders listen to their customers. And as IoT market leader, Tectalic is committed to supporting our customers as they flourish in the IoT ecosystem. And together with Exedra and Sanra, we are able to de deliver top tier end-to-end -end Lorenz solutions for virtually any use case. With this, I would like to end my presentation and thank you very much for attention. Uh, now we'd like to take any questions from the attendees and we'll be glad to answer them. If you have any questions, please, uh, you can send them in the Q&A window. Bashar will read them loud and panel will be able to answer them accordingly. Or additionally, you may be able to send us the, your questions through our email. Bashar, do we have any questions? Actually, um, Mr. Sri Wansan, I did raise his hand, so we'll be glad if. Uh, his questions uh, could be put in the Q and A session, or in the meantime, we can also be we are open to have the Q &A, uh, questions be answered via email. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, and uh, everyone, then uh, th thank you for attending the webinar and. Uh, Please uh, contact us uh, through our website or through our email, and we are located in um, Salmia, and we'll be glad uh, to uh, do uh, business with you accordingly. Thank you so much for attending the webinar. Thank you, Ali, and thank you, Taras, for your valuable time and wonderful presentations. I once again thank all the attendees and hope that you had enjoyed and found this webinar useful. Like Bashar said, for any inquiries, you may contact us at the following numbers on your screen or send, it, send us an email at info at etc-kw.com. You all have a nice day and thank you.